We need to prepare these tools before the work. Ant Miner Test Fixture Heat Gun Flux Heat Curing Conduct Heat Black Glue Fluke 15B plus Multimeter The negative pole of the test head of the multimeter needs to be welded with a sharp needle. Tweezers and Scraping Knife High Temperature Tin Solder Paste Circuit Board Cleaner Tin Tool Now disassemble the miner. Install the USB driver. Install the XShell 5 program. Plug in the power but don't turn it on and connect to the computer USB. Before we run the XShell program we need to make sure the USB driver is installed success and remember the port number. Start the XShell 5 program. Create a new connection. Protocol selection serial. Configuring serial protocol parameters. Port select the port corresponding to USB. It was COM3 before, so I chose COM3 here. Boo rates selects 115,200, then configures RLOGIN to 115,202. Click to connect. Open the test fixture power switch. When you see this prompt, the connection is successful. Plug in the cable and turn on the power of the hashboard then put on the cooling fan. Click the test button on the test fixture. If the check chain ASICNUM equals 57 appears on the XShell 5 program screen, the signal is interrupted after it reaches the 57th chip. It is likely that the 58th chip is damaged. If the check chain ASICNUM equals 8 appears on the XShell 5 program screen, the signal is interrupted after it reaches the 8th chip. It is likely that the 9th chip is damaged. If the check chain ASICNUM equals 0 appears on the XShell 5 program screen, there are three problems. Number 1, the test fixture does not detect the hash board. Number 2, the hash board power supply module has failed. Number 3, the 0th chip or the 62nd chip has failed. If the XShell 5 program screen appears this prompt, it means that the hash board is working fine. Now let's determine if the 58th and 9th chips detected by the test fixture are damaged. Test the resistance value, the multimeter uses the diode gear position. Test voltage, multimeter uses DC gear position. The resistance and voltage values were tested by these five test points. The following are normal chip voltage values and resistance values, which are normally floating at around 20%. Note that the internal and external parameters are different. Mark the damaged chip. Adjust the heat gun temperature to 450 degrees Celsius. The distance between the heat gun and the heat sink is kept at 1 cm. After heating it for 10 seconds, remove the heat sink. 
After heating the backside for 10 seconds, remove it with force. Heat the chip and remove it after about 10 seconds. Place the new chip on the tin tool and add tin to it. Keep the heat gun at 10 cm or more to heat the tin solder paste until it melts. Place the chip alignment position into the hash board. Heat the surface of the chip for 10 seconds. Ensure chip pin alignment. Then test the hash board again. Now the hash board is normal. Heat the front heat sink and install it. Apply the black glue to the surface of the chip before installing the back heat sink. And minor S9 hash board repair completed. The following is a hash board signal diagram and notes. Use the multimeter's negative electrode needle for detection. The test needle cannot be in contact with the heat sink. Signal transmission direction.